please open your textbooks on page 236. We will be looking at module 6.1, Web Design with Tables. So you will remember from last year that we did some basic web design and we used the HTML language. Remember that when you're designing your web page, you do this in Notepad++ and then you save the document as an HTML file. When doing this, it allows you to open the web page in your browser. Remember that it is a good idea to have both the HTML document open as well as the web page in your browser. You can split your screen to do this. That way you can make changes to the design and then see how the changes will affect the page in the browser. Let's recap some of the things that we learned about last year. Various HTML elements. The first thing we learned about was the basic structure of the web page. You remember that you have an open tag and a closing tab. You will remember for the basic structure that we always open up our HTML and close our HTML. Then we have a head section and a body section. Everything you type in the body section is what will appear on the web page. You will remember BR for break and HR for horizontal rule. H1 to H6 are your various headings and P is for paragraph. In the head section, you will remember we use the title tag. Remember you open the title tag and close it and what you write in between the two tags is what will appear in the tab in your browser. We also learned various formatting of text like B for bold and I for italic. We learned how to create lists, ordered lists and unordered lists. And we learned how to insert an image. What we will be learning in this module is how to insert a table into your web page. Let's start off by remembering the basic structure of our web design. The first thing we do is we open up our HTML tag and at the end we close the HTML tag. We then have our head section and our body section. In the head section, we are going to add a title by opening the title tag and closing the title tag. What you put in the middle of that will appear in the tab of the browser. In the body section, anything that is typed there will be the content of your web page. This module is about creating tables in our web pages. When we want to create a table in a web page, we need to open and close the table tag. For each row of the table, you will need to open up a table row using the TR tag, open and close it for each row. So in this case, we have two rows in our table. Should a row be a heading row, you would use the table heading tag. Should it be any other row, you will use the table data tag. Let's have a look an, at an example. So if this is the table that we wanted to create, a table with three rows, the first row being the headings. First step is to open up and close your table tag. You then need to open and close a table row for each of the three rows. So we've opened and closed it three times. The first row you will see are our three headings, tour, days, and depart. So you're going to open up table heading for tour, one for days, and one for depart, all in the first row. Let's have a look at the second row of our table. This is table data, game reserves, five and 12 for March. So in the second rows tags, we will have table data, game reserves, five, and 12th of March. And for the third row, it will look similar. For South Coast, 4 and the 23rd of April. 
There are various table attributes that we can add to the table tag to change the way our table looks. So the first one is align. This specifies the horizontal alignment of the table in the browser. So this can be center aligned, left aligned, or right aligned. So if you have a look at the example, we've got our table tag, and in there we've added a line equals center. The next table attribute that we can add is the border. If we do not add a border to our table, there will be no lines going around the table. This indicates the width of the lines used. So the bigger the number, the greater the width of the outside border. The next table attribute that you need to know about is the border color. This specifies what color you want the outside border of your table to be. So you add this attribute in the opening tag for your table. Table border color equals red. Take note of the spelling of color as well. This can be various colors, black, blue, green, yellow, etc. The next table attribute is BG color. BG st stands for background. So this specifies the background color of the table. Table BG color equals light blue. Again, you can change this color to various colors. The next table attribute is called cell padding. And this is the distance in pixels between the text and the border of the cell. Have a look at the picture at the bottom. So the space between the text and the border of the cell is called cell padding. This attribute is called cell spacing. This is the distance in pixels between the cell borders. So have a look at the two examples. The first example is a table without cell spacing. You will see the cells are right next to one another. The table below is a table with cell spacing. So that is the space between the different cells. We insert this once again in our table tab. So table cell spacing equals 10. The last table attribute that you need to know about is the width. And this is the width of the entire table within the browser. It can be done in two different ways. It can either be indicated as a pixel or number of pixels or the percentage of the width of the browser itself. So we add table width equals either the number of pixels, like the example 800, or the percentage 50%. All of these table attributes are added in the opening table tab. So you can have many different attributes added there. You can have table align equals center, border equals five, border color equals read, and so on, all within the opening table tab. Let's start off by doing an example of a table in an HTML document. But before we do the table, we need to do the basic structure of our web page. So we need to open up our HTML and close it. Remember, in our basic structure, we have our head section and we have our body section. Again, remember to open and close each of the tags. I like to tab them in a bit because it makes it a lot easier to read and understand the web page as you go along and you get more information on the page. Right, in the head we will have our title. Remember, the title is what will display in the tab in your browser. All right, now that we have the basic structure, whatever we type in the body section is what will appear as the content of our web page. So we are now going to create a table. So the first thing we do when we want to create a table is we open and close our table tags. Right, then you need to look at how many rows you will need in your table. You will need to open up a table row and close a table row for each one of these rows. So let's say that our table has got three rows. 
So I've opened and closed three rows. The first row in a table will normally be the headings of the table. So remember when doing the headings, it is called table heading. So I'm going to make my first heading a name. And the second one, I'm going to make grade. So notice I've put the two in between the opening and the closing tags for the first row. In my second row will no longer be the headings of the table, but the data in the table. So that's table data. So let's put in a name. And the person's grade. Right, so that would be in the second row. In the third row, we will have our table data again. There we go. So now we have a table. So we've opened and closed our table. We have three rows. We have in our first row our headings and in our next two rows we have our data. Now remember that in the table tag, you can add various attributes. So the first attribute I'm going to add is a border because we need to have borders around our table. If you don't put in the table border, your, your table won't have lines around it. Let's give that border a color. So we use the border color attribute for that. And I'm going to make mine red. And then let's choose cell spacing. There we go. So I've added three different attributes to my table. I've added a border, a border color, and some cell spacing. So once you've designed it in your notepad, remember that it is important to save the document as an HTML document. So let's do that now. Save as. So we're going to call this example and we're going to save it as an HTML hypertext markup language file. And I'm just going to save it on my desktop. Right, so once we have it saved, we can go and open it in our browser and have a look at what it looks like. So let's do that now. There it is, you can't see it, I'll move it into the page. There we go, example. So we can just double click on that and open it up. And there we go, we have got our table. So you will see we had our name and grade as our headings. There's our data. And we, we chose a thick border for the outside, that's why that looks thick. Let me just make it a little smaller so that you can actually see it. All right, there we go. And you'll notice it says tab in your browser on the tab because that's what we put in our title section. Open up Notepad++ and practice creating tables as well as adding attributes to the table tag. And then I would like you to do activity one, question one on page 239 of your textbook.